Chains and Breakdowns, a podcast dedicated to bridging the gap between specialty coffee and the heavy music community. On this episode, I'm joined by Griffin Coyne, guitarist for the band Selfish Act. So grab a fresh cup of coffee and wake the fuck up! What's going on, caffeinated crew? Today I'm joined by Griffin from he's in a few bands. Uh we're we're I know him from Selfish Act first, Buffalo's premier hardcore act. Right? Is that the yeah, I see on a lot of bills. I yeah, I guess we're getting there. <laughs> I won't claim that myself, but I appreciate the title. <laughs> it's the the Buffalo's everyone's selfish of the act that we're putting on. How's that? We're getting there. Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. <laughs> Or when we're feeling nice, we like to say selfless act, you know? So there we go. There you go. Selfless. We got all the grounds covered. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing well. We're on uh we have like a little week vacation here in Rhode Island. So doing this right now. And then after this, we'll get back. But I'm also a teacher in summertime. So it's kind of nice. Oh, wait, you we're teach winning. in this? <laughs> oh, you teach during the year and then you're on summer break. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I got a couple months off and then back to the grind in September. Oh, so you played a show in Rochester and now you're in Rhode Island. Yeah. But separate from the band, this is just like a, a, oh, uh, like a little family vacation. Nice. Um, I was supposed to play Rhode Island a few weeks back, but some shit fell through. But uh, yeah. I've heard it's very nice. It's a good time. Yeah. Right on the coast. So are you in like Providence or? No, we're in, it's called Charlestown. It's near Westerly, you know, like the Connecticut border. Okay. So. We do like a little trip down to Mystic and all kind of stuff. Sick. Yeah. I I know it's a little late, but are you drinking anything specific right now? Coffee wise or just, just water. I wanted to do the right thing with the coffee, but it's, you know, a little late here. <laughs> We've been it is a little. Bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've I, had plenty of coffee today, if that helps. It does. And I mean, we can drop, we can drop one of those in the chat. Um, We can, <laughs> we can chat about that. What's what, on the road today what was the most notable coffee that you had so it's the same i mean i'm I, you've had a couple people from buffalo and i've listened um i'm a big tim hortons fan i know it's kind of offensive to everyone up in canada i saw the eye roll wow um, but true buffalonians from the city of buffalo love tim hortons and i'll stand that by feels, that that feels like a shot towards uh, specifically Lexi, since she's, I guess, or not from They're They're not from, uh, no, that was not supposed to be a shot, but if, if that's taken that way, it's not intended, but uh, okay. Well, <laughs> there was no a lot offense. of Dunkin' Donuts talk. There was a lot of Dunkin' Donuts talk during another one too. I think <laughs> there was an equivalent amount of hatred towards Tim Hortons. I feel right from so it's, it's, certain, it's a little back and forth. <laughs> there you go. It's a little competition. I, like Tim Hortons for the donuts, but I do not like the coffee. See, I'm, I don't love the food there. I'll do it because it's cheap. I'm just, so that's the thing is, you know, I'm, I'm looking for the cheapest coffee. So like Tim Hortons is consistent. Same thing every day. It's mm -hmm. like $2 and 50 cents, not paying $5 for a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> what so, is your, what's your order? Just a extra large double, double. And sometimes if it's, if it's a Wednesday during the school year, it's uh two extra large double doubles. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> and then right around 12 o'clock i'm like super energetic my kids are like what's wrong with you don't worry about it <laughs> two large double doubles that's what's wrong with me boss um <laughs> right you might might as well be canadian you might as well be like a canadian construction worker <laughs> yeah right well you know it's our favorite things when we cross over we've done canada a bunch of times now um and we always stop at the first tim hortons over the peace bridge because tim hortons in canada is 10 times better than it is in the states um so yeah, is it like the uh, on that '70s show how they're always saying the beer stronger in Canada? You know that that joke. I mean, it is. Yeah, yeah. The like first the, time I had the, a PBR over there, I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> that's because. So I'm not native to. I'm not Canadian, but I just heard uh, that from Evans one with you. Yeah. Yeah. So when I first moved here, I saw the blue can of PBR yeah. for the first time, and it was like, damn, five point nine percent. Are y'all right. out of your mind? But that's the one we drink now. <laughs> yeah, there we go. 
you got to adapt. But um, so yeah, I started off with that, and then we, uh, my fiance and I were driving down. And now New York State has redone all of the throughways, so they have like, have you, you guys? I'm assuming have gone through um, Pennsylvania and stopped at Sheets and gotten coffee from there. I have before, but like as a band, we haven't. Oh, okay. So I actually love Sheets coffee. I have to say. So New York State has redone all their throughways, and they have the same looking machines. And I was all excited, and I got it. And it was awful, whatever it was. <laughs> So that was kind of a bummer, but yeah. our band is a uh, semi addicted to sheets. If I had my keys closer to me, I could pull up our singer. Owen got us all sheets rewards cards. <laughs> wow. So That's uh, a, <laughs> if anyone wants to sponsor the band, that's who we're going for. So the, the, we, we just got visas and the number one thing we're excited for, not even for the shows, it's just like the coffee and food and one yeah. member in particular is excited for shopping, but um, most of it is, you know, Wawa sheets, Bucky's once we get down there, like it's, it's the main goal of the oh, band. Yeah. And it's so funny because it's not really a thing in New York state. Um, but as soon as you get down to Pennsylvania or Ohio or Maryland or whatever, that's when they start picking up. So yes. I do have a funny story about a Wawa though. So our first weekend as a band, our drummer, David, um, traditionally wears like the new balances that are 15 years old with the holes in them. Mm-hmm. It was 3 a.m. And the manager's like, dude, what's wrong with your shoes? David's like, come on, I'm getting roasted by the manager of Oahu at 3 a.m. with my shoes. <laughs> that should tell you something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so he went on Depop and uh, ordered another busted pair, but you know, they look oh a little better. <laughs> Don't buy. That's like the one thing is like, I'll buy shirts, like maybe even pants, but shoot like used shoes. No, it kind of freaks me out. Yeah, it's a little nasty. Although I do like, I like some Nike shoes, but I don't like supporting them directly. So I'll do some like lightly worn things like that. So I don't mm-hmm. buy directly from them, you know? Or if like a homie's trying to get rid of a pair, and right. it's like, I know this dude doesn't have busted feet. Yes. <laughs> right. We'll give him 50 for him. Um, I'll tell you what I'm drinking. I know that you say you're going for the cheapest option. Mine would be on the other side of the spectrum. Where I went okay. for the expensive option, I came back from like a vacation a couple of weeks ago. Everybody's tired of hearing about this, I know, um, <laughs> but I was in Copenhagen. I went to uh, Coffee Collective, which has been around for a long time, and they focus on um, paying their direct. They do direct trade with farmers to get their coffees, and they focus on paying as much as they possibly can to the producer without, you know, they they do like a whole end of the year sustainability report and profit report and everything. They're extremely transparent. And I got uh, a very special coffee from them. It was like the last bag at the shop of this coffee. It was uh, Gesha Takeshi, Takeshi, very difficult to say. It's from Bolivia and it's a Geisha variety, which is very highly sought after uh, in the coffee community. And the notes that it says on here it's i'm half i'm reading danish so hopefully i can fumble through this um it's got like aromatic of melon bergamot and i don't know what first skin is okay but it's whatever that is uh maybe i'll i'll google it real quick but it's uh definitely a very like complex interesting coffee and i love everything i have ever had from them the and packaging looks cool too I'll, it's, I'll add that <laughs> oh so i had to dump it in a box i fucked up the bag um, oh okay that, but, that's that's custom gotcha yes the, the <laughs> bag the, the bag is like this kind of like peach color kind of look okay. pinky and peach um and then these labels just kind of fit right over it but they actually so they, they tell you on each coffee like what the dollar per pound for the fair trade and the market price is, and then how much higher they pay for the coffee and so like this one averages at two and a half dollars or so both at market and fair trade cost and they're paying 1897 percent more is what they pay Mm. the farmer so i i don't i can't do fast math on that but it's it's two thousand times two percent which is a lot of money i feel like i'm an english teacher i can't help you with the math is that four thousand dollars a pound? That, <laughs> that seems like a like lot. It, but I don't... 
I don't want to sound dumb, but that sounds good. Yeah. I don't either. I do Canadian math. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is very good. Very, very like kind of fruity, uh, citrusy, really nice. I wish I wasn't drinking it at eight 30 in the evening, but that's fair. Beggars can't be choosers. You know what I mean? I can respect the fancy coffee game. I just like the notes of coffee and I'm good to go. You know? Yes. And if I'm feeling fancier, you know? Yeah, of course you're on the road, (laughs) you know, you got a couple extra dollars. You want to stop at Daglo in Brooklyn or, you know, go to say or something like that. Maybe go by uh, what's it over winter in Buffalo. Is that, that's John's one. Yeah. Yeah. I had something he made that was very good, but I couldn't tell you what it was, but I will say it was good. So, okay. John, leave it in the comments. (laughs) What, what, what did you make Griffin that he, he enjoyed? To add some context, it was at the spaced uh, record release thing. So maybe that helps, but it was a cool coffee. (laughs) Again, John, leave it in the comments. We want to (laughs) know what was it? (laughs) Do us this favor. Um, Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the, those people in spaced. Uh, getting to oh, see they're them, awesome, yeah. Getting to see them with spirit. It was a cool show, but it was like Spiritual Cramp and Military Gun, that tour that they were yeah. on. Yeah. And they came up and it, it was a very, very good time. I just love the fact that it's Revelation. Like that, I love the old school hardcore stuff. So to see them on, that is just really amazing, you know? Yeah. Um, and they've been busting their asses. So well deserved. Yeah. And that's, uh, I mean, they were on, who were they on before? They were on uh, NMZ, which is also like a yeah. great label. Uh, our friends in Spite House are on that label as well. And they've been doing a lot of really awesome stuff. Um, so I think that NMZ is such a great launching pad. And then for a space to get to Revelation, I'm like, I, whenever they made that That's jump, awesome. I was like, big moves. <laughs> right. Big moves. They put the scene on their back. Yeah. In Buffalo, do you have like a shop? Is it over winter usually when you want to like, you know, do a little fancy kind of bougie bitch moment? There used to be one on uh Hurdle, and I think it's it might be called like Root or something. That was okay. cool. I, I live in the city, so like we don't venture too far out for like I think overwinters in Williamsville, just outside of the city. Okay. Um, so we don't venture too far out for like things like that. And there's not a ton within. Um, but there was one cool one on Hurdle I remember called Root. Um, that may have closed, unfortunately, but, um, yeah, yeah, that's kind of rough. Like the, what kind of runs the city is this chain called spot, um, which had like, I don't know, we still stopped going there because there was some weird interaction with their workers and they wouldn't let them unionize. So, what um, I don't, yeah. So that was, um, kind of the, the nail in the coffin. And also in my opinion was not that great. Like I don't need a super refined coffee as I've mentioned already. So like, right. Tim Hortons doesn't actually treat its workers amazingly, but, um, but if I'm paying, you know, two bucks <laughs> and it's I mean, right there, you know? It, yeah. You're able to turn the blind eye. Be like, I, I'm just going to drink my coffee slowly. And <laughs> yeah, it's more of like a mass product thing than a, uh, I don't want to necessarily pay into a big business or a, a business or pay a lot of money to a business that is not treating its employees properly. So I don't know if Tim Hortons is union either because they're owned by a Canadian. Are they owned by Canada still or doc? I think they're Dr. Pepper Keurig. Well, right. I mean, overall, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's unionized, especially down here. Um, and I think they're all smaller, like franchises here anyways mm-hmm. too. But, um, I will say they have, you know, uh, people stay there and enjoy it. I know a bunch of my kids, um, start working there and then move on from there. So it's, it's a good launching pad, I guess. I'm cool with that. <laughs> So do you teach high school? Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, I have uh, juniors and seniors typically. Wow. And you're how old? I'm 26. So you're like 10 years older than your students. Oh, dude, it's been weird. So like I started substitute teaching my sophomore year of college. So I was like 19. (laughs) And like I substitute taught at the school I went to high school at. So it was like people who were like two or three years younger than me while I was in school. Um, Which... It sounds terrible, but it kind of works because they know they can't get anything over your head. No, I know what you're doing. You know, I know all your names already, so we're good. Yes. Um, but now it's it's been cool because I think the kids are so used to having like a 40 year old who has no clue what's going on in their lives. So I think mm-hmm. they like having someone who's a little bit younger and like I have tattoos and shit. Uh, they make fun of me for the band. They're like, "Oh, Mister's out uh, playing with his little band this weekend." And I'm like, "All right, guys, calm down." <laughs> That's so good. Um. And then some of them come to the shows, which is kind of cool. Um, started moshing and all that. So, yeah. 
You're like a positive hardcore influence. You're what the world you try. needs. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I would have had a teacher that was a hardcore band. We, I definitely had some cool teachers, but I don't think any were in hardcore bands. Um, but I'm in another band called GOA with um, another teacher who's a bit older. So he's been holding it down for a while. What kind of band is that? Because I, I was looking at the page, but I was I didn't really like listen to any of the the stuff you'll have. So it's uh, well, they've been around for nine years now. I just joined in the past year, but it's it's very borderline like punk hardcore, but it's very like classic. So like okay, traditionally you'd be um, you know they would just be a hardcore band in the eighties, but you know nowadays it's hardcore punk, and now they're kind of rebranding as just hardcore, or we're rebranding as kind of just hardcore. That's what it is at the end of the day. Hmm. Um, we do, this is kind of cool, and I don't know how far a reach this has, but uh, we just recorded a record that's coming out on Triple Amber Records and 7-inch, uh, but we did it with Don Fury. So it's kind of wild. Remind me who that is. Don Fury is the dude who recorded all the Revelation bands. Okay, okay, okay. Front. Yeah, yeah, the classic. Okay, yes. Um, so that's going to be crazy. did that. Oh, it was, it was like my fucking idol. It was so cool. Um, and then Mike, <laughs> Mike Jeffers is the drummer of that. And he's been in a million bands with like mm-hmm. Union, Herod. Um, so like, it was also a dream come true for him too. And I know all of us, uh, Jordan and Rich as well. Uh, but it was crazy. Like you walk up and you're like, fuck, there's like shelter on the wall and it's another <laughs> girl of biscuits. Um, and like, I, I just actually told this story on a different podcast last week. So not to repeat shit, but, um, I, like I played out of Gigi Allen's guitar cab, um, and then Rich played out of Surge from Quicksand's uh, bass rig. And then Jeffers played drums on like the drum kit that's recorded all of those albums since like the 80s. You know, it's, it was nuts. really fucking surreal. Did Gigi um, Allen's guitar cab sound smell like shit? I asked on that and he goes, it's in a case for a reason and we don't leave it open that long for a reason. And I don't touch it for a reason. And I'm like, enough there said. You go. That's all you need to say. <laughs> Um, but he appreciates, I don't think he gets a ton of people coming through who are like, um, who are like hardcore heads. So I think he really liked the fact that we were impressed by everything. He liked showing it off and he was like, you know, AF was just here last, last summer. You're sitting in these seats and they were sitting in these seats and I don't know, it was a ton of fun, you know? So did you sit in that seat for as long as possible so that you could try to like soak in some of the, I guess so. Yeah. But I mean, Vinny's, he's, they're all cool guys. Like when they come through Buffalo, they come out and talk to everybody or they're not in the Mm -hmm. back. They're at the bar the whole time. So those guys are transparent either way, but just to be in the same room where they were like recording shit last year was so cool. Let's, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about your introduction to hardcore. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, a tattoo artist around here, uh, pointed out that I'm a Nepo baby, I guess, in hardcore. So my parents (laughs) are into hardcore and got me into it. Um, I've which never, some people think is really cool. Yeah, I've never heard that. <laughs> um, I'm kind of embracing it now because at first I'm like, it's cool that they got me into it, and I'm like, no, it's actually way cooler that people found it on their own. But, um, but I appreciate the fact that they got me into it. Um, so like they they've been hardcore forever. My my uncle's in hardcore, and um, so like as from the time I was a little kid, they were like putting me on to like the you know Zero Tolerance was the big Buffalo band from the early '90s. So, like that was on my like childhood iPod and shit. <laughs> and like snap case and yeah so i i love all that stuff um and then i got really into um punk so like no effects was kind of like the one that really got me which i know people hate on them but like they've got a cool message and they're talented as fuck they got um, their space yeah right um i mean they're goofy but there yeah. are you know they've done stuff and uh from there went back and like got into like black flag and dead Kennedys and stuff. And then started moving my way up to like the revelation stuff. Um, and then finally landed like a modern day stuff, a modern day hardcore. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's been part the entire time, but, um, started off with those like really early Buffalo bands and then went into punk transitioned to modern day hardcore. But I so, definitely have some punk roots that, that it all comes from, you know? Yeah. And they're hard to get rid of, I'm sure. I'm not trying to, so I guess, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, which we, is why GOA is a great outlet, because, like, that's one of the places where I can actually do those, like, punk-oriented hardcore songs versus, like, the kind of, like, more metal-based ones I do with the other two bands. So. And it, it kind of surprises me to hear you say that you come from a more punk background, because I do feel like Selfish Act especially is very metallic. Yeah. Um, It's, like 
yeah, like I've seen it classified as like beat down. And I think that there's probably like a lot more metalcore, especially from the drumming. There's like a lot of metalcore kind of deathcore influence in there. It kind of feels like. Well, it's uh, funny how that came about because so I have the like punk and then like Revelation era hardcore influences in my playing at least. David, our drummer, is loves like integrity and hate breed. And in fact, his okay. Instagram had, handle is integrity hate breed. <laughs> it's just funny, but I mean, it makes sense. Um, and then our singer, um, who kind of like he and I are on opposite ends of the spectrum with every sort of like um, creative like decision, which is kind of perfect because then we kind of like pull each other out of one another's bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, so he definitely pulled me into writing more metallically because he was more like a, a scene kid or I don't know the proper way to put it, but like he, he liked that court. Um, like the bigger, like suicide silence type shit. Yeah. That's, that's a scene kid. Yeah. Right. So, um, so where we kind of arrived, at least on the demo was that middle ground between like, I guess the scene kid and like a punk kid. And, um, so it was me trying to write those riffs. And I think that's why they have that like weird little, like you can hear there's some New York metalcore influence from the nineties. And there's mm -hmm. also like more modern shit going on. So it's cool. When that's honestly where I I'm hearing, like now that you've kind of placed it that way, I hear so much early ups, like New York metalcore, like, yep. EOD is the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I wasn't even, I don't want to be that, like the, the you're from Buffalo every time I die, but like, I definitely hear, even some of that like early ETID vibe, converge vibe, sort of like yeah. That I'll take very, those ones. I, I'm not a big ETID fan, but I, I can do the first couple records. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that. I, I'm I'm only really early ETID as well, when it was very kind of more chaotic, not as a uh, southerny. Yeah, I don't. Right. I'm from the south, but I don't like the southern hardcore stuff at all. See, the closest thing to like the southern hardcore, one of my favorite bands is Avail, which they have like. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll throw those like Southern guitar uh, riffs in there, but they're not like Southern metal core. So right. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's just not for me. <laughs> yeah. I find it a little cringe sometimes. Uh, right. But I Although was definitely. That one, Low Teens was cool. I like that record, but the rest of it, that's the only one I can do. That's not one of the first two. Yeah. Yeah. The, the more Southern they got, I was like, but y'all are from Buffalo. This is weird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It was weird. I, I like even early haste the day. I don't know if this is going over anyone's head, but like early haste the day and uh, he is a legend. I really like that stuff. Cause it's yeah. like kind of scary almost, but then the, when it gets cleaner, it's like, this is boring and cringe. So we've left. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's super cool. I like, honestly having parents that were in a hardcore is, I feel like you think it's, it's better to get into it yourself and maybe in some ways it is, but having parents that understand what you're into instead of having to like show them multiple examples and try to drag or convince them to drag you to a show. Right. And and then they're like watching it and being like, why do you even like this? Or you can't, you can't understand anything they're saying. So no, and it was nice because that's how I made the connection to, to Mike Jeffries because my uh, parents are friends with them. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, when I was started going to shows by myself, they're like, Hey, can you keep an eye out for him? When I was like, you know, 15. Um, and then naturally, you know, we started to click and now we're in a band together, but yeah, it's cool. That's, that's crazy. You are an Epo baby though, but it's okay. I, I you know, I'm embracing <laughs> it because I, you know, I think it's important to distinguish. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's okay. I honestly, I'm, I am a little bit jealous because I grew up very Christian and I, for a long time I had to convince that. Like my parents let me listen to heavy music as long as it was like quote unquote Christian. Yeah, yeah. And so I I had to find hardcore a very different way than just honest like giving it directly to me. Yeah, that's cool. You know. But you know, we're all here together now. And we all <laughs> right. have our our thing to add, which is nice. That's what I mean, that's what makes it so fun. Which is why you get the writing process for selfish act, you get a scene kid and a punk. Yep. writing cool and throw a metal core drummer down the center and see what happens <laughs> you all you should always throw a metal core drummer down the center because they're yep. super precise although i will say we played we played with integrity and he was dying 
You know, oh. <laughs> that was like his dream come true. And I mean, they're awesome. I mean, Duid was so cool, but he's so funny because he walks around with like a fanny pack and he's like, yo, you guys like stickers? And we're like, hell yeah, we like stickers. <laughs> <laughs> he's like digging through his fanny pack. <laughs> But just imagine it's, that man. He's like the nicest guy in the world. He's like, yo, do you you guys like fucking guitar picks too? And we're like, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> it does not surprise me. Like the stories from from the past 20 or 30 years with Dwid and then like the whole New York like city hardcore beef between yep. like <laughs> Cleveland and uh, it's hilarious the stories about Dwid. So it does not surprise me that he's just got a fanny pack full of guitar picks and stickers that he's handing <laughs> out to people at shows. But it also makes you think you're like, cause I know some of those other guys and they're still like hard as fuck, but like Dwid is just a soft, like nice dude. <laughs> like where did this beef ever come from? It's good in history, but he wrote so much good shit too. That's the thing is like, those guys are oh, hard yeah. and they wrote like cool music. Like they wrote one cool album or like they wrote like a cool couple of hits. But right. Integrity has got like five really good albums. Yep. So. Although that was such a rough show um, for them, at least, because like they're super cool, but like it was Despair coming back. Um, mm. People love Despair uh, and Union too. So like mm-hmm. it was definitely like the Buffalo heyday and then Integrity. Uh, but still, it was awesome. Did they headline? Yes. Oh, Jesus. Um. But it, I mean, it, it sold out like real quick. And, yeah, it was, it was a really good time. Yeah, I feel like the the it, like one of the Buffalo bands getting back should have maybe headlined. <laughs> it may have become uh, apparent afterwards, but you know. Yes, yes. Who who promoted that? I I, I don't really remember if there was a specific name on it. I I don't even. It maybe it was After Dark. Um, okay. Because it, Chris Ring had his hand in it. Um, it was and, like a bigger uh, yeah, show, I cool. guess, too. Yeah. Right, but it, like all the other shows have like that Buffalo hardcore marker or something along those lines. So, but I think that was an after dark. What is the deal with seconds left? So, we was selfish. I mean, this is our first hardcore band for any of us. Mm-hmm. Um, so we spent the fall because it's only been about just under a year right now. So we spent the fall playing every show that was offered um, within reason, you know. Um, and then by the time the year turned. A couple of people who are like, you know, veterans of the scene uh, or been around for a while were like, you guys, because we got like a little bit of, you know, um, heat under us, which was cool. Um, they're like, you guys should stop playing Buffalo and just go out of town and play Buffalo, you know, every couple months. And we're like, cool, we're down to do that. And we started like touring and stuff, which was awesome. But we still love Buffalo and we want to play as many shows here as possible. So we started Seconds Left as a opportunity for all of us who want another band to do that and also to have a couple more people that we love um, and hang out with them more often um, and then play whatever show's thrown at us. Mm-hmm. Not thrown at us. I mean, there, we have really cool things offered. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there's just an opportunity for us to, to branch out musically and then go and um, play some more shows locally. So why the Marlboro pack? That was just some a goofy idea we came up with. Oh, it's, it's I so think good. that was Owen, our our sing, singer, self Jack, drummer of Seconds Left. It was his idea. Um, yeah, no, that was a funny one. <laughs> so he's he. So the singer is he's drumming in Seconds Left. Yeah, and it's so so the whole thing is I'm playing guitar in both. Our bass player from Selfish Connor is playing guitar in Seconds. A one who sings the selfish is playing drums in seconds. And then um, we have Liv, who was, we just met through going to shows and they're singing in it. Mm-hmm. And then um, we have Aiden, who's playing bass. Aiden, who um, she promotes through Gags in Buffalo, is playing bass in this. Yeah. So it was just, you know, opportunity to get everybody playing different roles, except for me, um, and tag some more people on there. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like crazy i like it i i like didn't realize that you were in you were playing that and i saw it on related artists when i was listening like like a while back i was listening to selfish act and everything and i was like oh this band's kind of crazy like it sounds good i like the like the dumb marlboro branding yeah. is very cool and then when i saw it on your profile i was like oh shit like he's also in this <laughs> band this is crazy um i'm like but- a little bummed like the recording is not awesome and we wrote those songs within a week before we recorded it um 
Okay. So it was a rough one. <laughs> That's, but it's, it works. It's so funny that like the project that you care the least about and you put like, you just do like what whatever you want to do, like naturally, it feels yeah. like it, it always works better than the one, the one that you're like really trying to push for. I don't understand that. Well, I also like the deadline aspect of it because with Selfish, we got together in April of last year and we tried writing forever and like we got one song out we're like, fuck. Um, and then my buddy Jordan, who sings in Juggernaut and GOA, booked a show with Scarfold, actually, who ended up to coming down, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, and he added us to it and it was in early August. And it got to be like the last week in July and we we're like, we don't have any songs. What are we going to do? Um, so then we just wrote a set and those became the songs for the for the demo. Um, and this was kind of the same thing where we had this band going with seconds and each time we just got together, we were doing dummy riffs. So we're like moshy and cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but like when you're just doing like zero, one, three on, on a drop tuning, like you don't remember any of that shit. No. Um, so it was either Donnie or Lexi was like, we want you guys to open the, um, the spaced record release show. Um, but you need to have a demo out or something. And we're like, okay, well, we need the, to do the math here to get this out in time. We need to write this and record it in the next week or two. And then Owen and I just, uh, just the two of us sat down and he's picking up guitar. So he kind of like translated some ideas in the, like, I just learned a guitar. Let's try and do this. Uh, and then I got kind of translated them into rhythm and it, it turned out really cool because like I coming from punk, I do a lot of like fast picking and strumming and shit like that. Um, mm-hmm. and he's like, just hold note open, leave it for like two measures. And I'm like, yes. And it was like a struggle for me to like, not <laughs> play that fast. So it was kind of cool. There's a, there's a couple of people that I talk to, they're older heads. Um, one yeah. of them's in my band and then, uh, there's actually Shane from Terminator who I just talked to, they kind of made this comparison as well, where it's people who come from, um, punk and start playing hardcore, especially like more rhythmic. You can always tell those people compared to the people that come from like, you know, metalcore where they're like super clean and stuff like, you you know, reality denied. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Matt's like from probably like more metalcore, he's got all the syncopation. You can do the crazy double bass and shit. And like, it's very noticeable, uh, <clears throat> noticeable when you hear Shane play drums, it's, it's straight <laughs> up a punk drummer playing a breakdown. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's, I, uh, I like, like the different combinations because second sounds like a completely different band than, than oh, yeah. selfish. And it's just that one little change of the drummer is different yep. <laughs> and it and pushes it the writing. Difference. It pushes the writing of the guitar to be completely different. Absolutely. I love it. Um, no, it's so cool. And, and funny you mentioned this. So we played with Terminator at that uh, No Warning show. Mm-hmm. Um, and then last week, Selfish played with Cloned Apparition in Kalamazoo. Oh, and I then, didn't know that. Yeah, and then we played in Buffalo. Seconds Left played with them in Buffalo on Wednesday. Yeah. So we are hanging out with all those guys, you know. <laughs> so you know Alec. Yeah, I know Alec's awesome. That's my guitarist. Yeah, right. No, we were talking about that because I saw you guys with that, um, with uh, RD and Fight on Sight. And oh, you were at the, the, show. My, the you were at the Legion show. Yeah, yeah. That we came up I, with a couple other members of uh, Seconds. Okay, so it was that was a good time. Did y'all play? Y'all didn't play. No, we just came to see you. Though. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought because I was like, all these bands were Canadian, so. Which I gotta say, the fucking Canadian scene is awesome. Like I it's love pretty Buffalo. wild. But you guys have so many good bands. And I also love the fact that there's so, like, everyone's lifting each other up. Like, I, I don't, we're not in enough to get the whatever beef's happening if there is any. But, like, it just, it's cool because, like, it seems so supportive, even across the fucking province. I mean, even like uh, the little, like, maybe not beef, even, but like the little prejudices that, like, maybe that's not my favorite sound or maybe that's not my favorite yeah. style it's still like encouraging people. It's like, Oh, we're going to get our visa. We're going to the States. Definitely. You should do that. And we're going to like do as much as we can to like talk y'all up. Yep. So yeah, no, it's so cool. I'm very proud of clone because that's like every member in that band. That's basically their first band. Yep. And they've already and done like I'm, two U S like runs. So Alice fucking busted their head open during our set. Um, with seconds left. What and then goes on stage and has a blue bandage on their head. 
<laughs> they're like, I just busted my head open. I'm like, I did not see that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're they're crazy. Alice yeah, is great. Was- they they shoot a bunch of shit for uh like bands all over the states as well. But every nice. time that they're in town, they're shooting shows and coming out and moshing, and it's sick. Yeah, and great great mosh moves too. I gotta say, T the drummer. Of clone, also one of the most goaded moshers in Montreal. They have one of like yeah. one of the cleanest styles I've ever seen. Yeah, that's wild. But I mean, that's, again, all those everybody up there does like hundred percent kids. Like, yeah, oof. it's it's cool. So, have you met you met Jordan, the the new drummer? Uh, of pure? which pure? Is that the kid? Yes, the sixteen year old kid. This the sixteen year old style icon. But that kid doesn't use a fucking snare, and that blows me away. He, he does we now. Were, he bought a snare. Oh, he did? Okay, because I was yeah. watching, it and I was like, he had this fucking time with a snare head just cranked, and I'm like, this sounds awesome. <laughs> the first time we played with them, he, and he was playing, it was like the first show we saw them, because you know we played a few shows with them um, in their previous iteration, and, and he like showed yeah. up with a, a Tom. And I was like, brother, what, what are you playing? He's like, it's a Tom. <laughs> I was like, like, no, I know what's wrong with you. <laughs> you need to get a snare. You're not supposed to have a Tom there. And he, he got one. We played, I played with another band and, and they played after us. And I was like, you finally got a snare. He's like, yeah, it sounds way better. <laughs> yeah. I was just impressed with the cell sound type before, but I, I'm excited to see him. Cause we're doing a couple shows with them. Um, two weeks, two weeks from now mm-hmm. we're doing Ottawa. And then I don't know. We're with fight on site. Okay. Two. So this is the three of us going to Ottawa, I'm pretty sure. Then only two of us are going to London. I don't remember which one of them is not coming. And then I don't know what I'm allowed to say or not allowed to say, but we're definitely coming back to Buffalo and there's unannounced bands on that show. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. So yeah, yeah. Should be cool. <laughs> the more you ask. Yeah. So that just came out. Friday, I think, yeah, it was announced. We're we're doing vinyl with uh, Wormwood Records. Yep. Um, it was really cool because like we tried doing like the whole circuit of like the bigger labels. Which, you know what can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like a couple of our friends who've been on other labels reached out to like them and were, like listen to this and they're like, well, you know, they've only been around for eleven months. Uh, but it was really cool because like back in um, November. Store Ear Collective in Rochester put out our demo without knowing any of us. And they did tapes and bought them. And Jared's from Only Shallow and Store Ear is awesome. He did that for us. And then Wormwood, we don't know them either. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and they they picked it up and have been super cool and had all those cool ideas. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, so yeah. Uh, but The More You Ask is the first single off that EP. There's six songs. I think it's going to come out in October if all goes to plan. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited about it. <laughs> Who'd y'all record with? So we've done everything except for the promo with Nate Borman, who is a Buffalo dude, mm-hmm. um, plays in the band Do Crime. Okay. But he has a, um, it's a great name, yeah. And yeah. it's also a great record. Check that out if you like, like, 80s melodic hardcore. Like, oh, sick. Um, yeah, it's it's a, it's really cool. Um, he has a mobile rig and he's done all the juggernaut and GOA stuff too, for the most part. Um, but he did our demo and did this, this full thing. So he came over to my apartment we recorded it in the apartment and I don't know, this guy can just fucking get everything going to the point where it sounds like a fucking studio. And it's so mm-hmm. cool. And then we sent it out to Will Hurst from uh, restraining order to mix and master it and uh, came back and yeah, we were really happy with it. Do you record live drums in your apartment? Yeah. <laughs> and in your neighbor's, uh, on both sides, people rent, so there's not really like you know who you're gonna complain to. Um, <laughs> but we're also respectful. I should add that like we don't play past like eight thirty. Um, right. It, it's kind of annoying when we start tracking at noon. I'm sure, but it's a Saturday and we do it like once or twice a year, so it's not the worst thing. But it's also where we practice too. You practice in your apartment. Yep. Now I should oh add, we're very lucky. My uh, my fiance's parents, we rent from them. We have both units. We have basically a full house. So there's like a okay, practice okay. room that I, I've soundproofed not well. Um, 
I thought I was like, I thought I was really cooking. When I was like putting up the phone panels and I'm like, here's a moving blanket. <laughs> and I went outside and I, I told him, I'm like, just hit the drums a couple times. And I'm like, fuck, it's just as loud. It it's not room. even, it did nothing. <laughs> it sounds like it's actually quieter in the room, which is kind of nice for our ears, but it was nothing for the outside. Yeah. That's the thing is like the, the moving blankets definitely help in the room. Yeah. <laughs> it is not keeping air from escaping. No, I did. I had this kind of awesome move because Owen, um, if you've ever seen us or have seen a video, ad lib some crazy shit. Uh, like we were in Pennsylvania and he called the crowd um, colonizers and Krispy Kreme crackers. Um, <laughs> uh, but he yells very fucked up shit on the PA. So I went to all in ears so that his voice was never amplified for my neighbors again. Ah, uh, yes. After he screamed some crazy shit in my neighborhood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sure uh, that saves you a few phone calls. Yes. No, it's it's way better. It's like just the band playing. It's like no one's screaming fucking high pitch like Suicide Silence voice. So it kind of yep. works. <laughs> yeah, that's a very notable thing about Selfish as well as the uh, the vocals are very much like they're not they're not de- like it's like I can tell that this person used to like that music, and so it's got that character. Like I don't like when I compare. I don't like comparing people to other people. But yeah. you know how you know how like Brian from Knocked Loose has that like really high influenced from like obviously deathcore style. Oh, but yeah. it works really, it works really well for what they do. I think it's like it's kind of that same uh, like uh area. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And he's worked oh. really hard on it. I mean it's it's evolved just in the year that we've been doing this, so mm-hmm. it's it's been cool. Yeah. It's all about like having that brand and I feel like when when you hear a voice that you can immediately know like that's that vocalist and that's important i feel like that's Absolutely. he's really got that character yep so you guys have the ep dropping soon wormwood great move uh those are nice people they did the cross check uh ep as well like the two songs nice. which is awesome um so they do a lot of stuff i didn't realize that they were even branching out into us bands so good for them and they, they also just announced two other U.S. bands like maybe a month ago. So I don't remember the names of them, but I think one's in like Texas and one's in California. So they're going oh, that's crazy. all over. Yeah. I might be, that might be complete bullshit, but I'm pretty sure that's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, he does everything, which is cool. Like he, he'll do like hardcore, metalcore, you know, anything that he's like into. Yeah. Like he puts it out. And so I, I really like respect that hustle from him. Oh, absolutely. And he, he got us to do like an alt cover on it, which I'm really excited about for when that comes out. We're doing a little like homage to a classic Buffalo band, but I won't do any more information than that right now. Yeah, don't, don't you have to spoil so, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what else do you guys have coming up uh, in the near future? So we're doing um, the rat. We have all of our dates out up until the end of September with mm-hmm. uh, two TBAs. One of them's real exciting. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, and yeah, I don't know, we're doing that run with Fight and Sight on 100%. Um, a couple weeks later, we're doing some like uh, near like Plattsburgh, New York, so close to that border with you guys. Yeah. Um, we're going out to Connecticut for the first time. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of going all over. Yeah. So <laughs> we're excited, you know. Um, this is my first time doing like a band that goes out. We're not doing full time touring because uh, we don't have the time. Like, I, I'm a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it's kind of a perfect job for it because I have like a week off every other month and then kind of take off whenever I want. So that's cool. Uh, within reason and with respect yeah. to the kids. But um, so yeah, we're going to keep doing weekenders um, probably some weeks once uh, the school year picks up and I have like those solid breaks that I put in. Um, and yeah, just keep plugging away like that. I mean, honestly, in this day and age, we don't have to tour like we did, you know, for the yeah. weeks at a time. Um, unless I guess you're like one of those big, big, signed arena bands but yeah now nowadays if you're starting your hustle you know a weekender every month or so and do like a week or a 10 day in the summer you know what i mean yep that that's the plan yeah yeah that's all you gotta do now fly in fly out (laughs) (laughs) one day um yeah (laughs) well griffin thank you so much for hanging out it's now dark i can no longer see you which is yeah it was kind of we had a little creepy thing going on (laughs) yeah you gotta it's a little spoopy um i just have one last question for you before we go yeah what's your favorite city for beans and breakdowns 
I got to keep it in Buffalo. I mean, even if we venture out away from Tim Hortons, we'll go to Overwinter and then we'll come back and go see one of the Buffalo hardcore bands. Um, yeah, I know we have a lot of really cool shit going on here and, you know, not to, not just because I'm from here, but I'm really, really happy with what's going on here. So got to keep mm-hmm. it at home. Great scene. Uh, I would shout out all of the Buffalo bands that I know of right now, but the list would be too long and we'd go for another 30 minutes. Yep. So, um, you know, shout out Spaced, shout out Selfish Act. Shout Jewel out. Tone, we have to we got to put Jewel Tone on there for sure. I was literally just about to They're say fucking, Jewel Tone. Yeah, yeah. Christian's uh, the I'm man. A, you filled in for us just recently. Shout out. Final Deck. Yep. Shout out. Final Deck, yep. Griffin, again, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I hope you have a lovely, lovely rest of your vacation in, in Rhode Island. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this episode of Being Some Breakdowns. I want to say a huge thanks to Griffin for hanging out on the podcast. Be sure to check out the latest single, The More You Ask, from Selfish Act, and keep an eye out for that upcoming EP wellness check coming soon. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. You can find out more information about the podcast by following us on Instagram at Beans and Breakdowns or on the web at beansandbreakdowns.com. Until next week, be sure to stay caffeinated and wake the fuck up.